Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, says the Lord. Um, Victor, can you turn that around? Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, today with the whole church, we celebrate the feast of St. Matthew, Apostle and Evangelist. Matthew was a tax collector that Jesus called to be one of the twelve. And um, so today God calls us from death to life, from distance from God into his love and mercy. So as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let's ask God for his healing mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And today we pray glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who with untold mercy were pleased to choose as an apostle, say Matthew the tax collector, grant that sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so we have a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I... A prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, through all, and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Our response is, Their message goes out through all the earth. Their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. 
Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Their message goes out through all the earth. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Their message goes out through all the earth. And so we sing together. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. And so as Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel. Keep us free from sin. Amen. Um... Well, dear brothers and sisters, we are celebrating the Apostle Matthew, who was a tax collector. And culturally speaking, at that time, a tax collector is probably one of the most hated figures. Why? Because this was someone from the Jewish culture, a Jewish person who was working for the Roman occupiers, collecting taxes for the Romans and collecting it from his own people. But a lot of times tax collectors would line up their pockets by adding even more money to the tax for themselves. And so they were very hated, you know, and at least not well liked at all. And so today, I just want us to imagine, imagine the scene. Imagine this scene where Jesus is walking with some of the ones he has already called. And they're walking into a city gate, you know, and Ma Matthew is the one sitting the tax collector who's ready to collect taxes. I mean, I can almost imagine like even some of the apostles he had first chosen maybe making comments like this. Oh, these tax collectors, you know, just, you know, greedy, terrible people, you know. <laughs> but then can you imagine the scene when, Jesus literally stops in front of Matthew, the tax collector. And the words coming out of his mouth are, follow me. There is a beautiful Caravaggio painting called The Call of Matthew, where it depicts this scene. It's Jesus with his finger pointed towards Matthew who's sitting at that table and it's like Matthew Matthew is pointing to himself and going me are you serious <laughs> are you really calling me 
And, you know, I thought, can you imagine? Let's say Matthew now got up and followed Jesus. I mean, what was the conversation like as they walked together towards Matthew's house? I mean, what, what, would, what would Peter and Andrew and James and John have been thinking when this person that they probably, you know, just as the culture around them hated and opposed, is now one of them walking with them home. I mean, can you imagine what kind of conversation that they they might have had, you know? Um, but it, it would be good to kind of sit with this scene because this is what Ignatius does, St. Ignatius of Loyola with a lot of the Gospels. He wants us to contemplate. He wants us to get into the scene and get a feel for what was happening around the time, you know? And, um, you know, if, if I were to translate it into our day, it would be like, you know, <laughs> there's this anti-racist movement, Right? in our world, which is really good. But it would be like, you know, someone, they might hate a racist person, which is, you know, you want to, you don't like what they're doing, definitely. But can you imagine Jesus, you know, you're, you're walking with Jesus and he meets a racist and he says, he points to the racist and he says, follow me. Or can you imagine a bunch of Democrats walking together and Jesus reaches the table and the Republican is sitting there. And Jesus says to the Republican, hey, come follow me. This is kind of translated it into our time. And I think one of the things, Father JT talked about this on Sunday, is how we are called to, to work together. Because... All of us have received this call from the Lord. And all of us are called to respond to Jesus. Now, I don't know how everybody will respond to Jesus. Everybody has to give their own account for how they respond to Jesus. But God always gives the invitation to all of us. Those we like, those we don't like, those we hate, those that oppose us, you know? And so, I love that first reading because it says, I urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love. Because all of us that God has called together, how, how can we be united when we are so different? Because it's not about a unity of personalities. Paul talked about a unity of faith. Unity of faith. What will bring us together is if we keep our eyes on the one who has called us, on Jesus. Because no matter where you go, People will be different in their understanding, in their opinions, in their personality. But as long as Jesus is the one who has called us, he is the source of our unity. If we remember that we are all called to respond to him. And I think that's the invitation for us today. And so let's ask the Lord to help us on this journey, to help us to say yes entirely to him and to unite us in Christ, to unite us in him and help us to continue to grow so that we can be more and more like Jesus. That's the call that we have received. And so now we unite our prayers to the Lord. Lord, 
you said you desire mercy and not sacrifice. You have come to call sinners, not the righteous. Help us as your church, Lord, to be able to live this mission. To call sinners, call those who are far off, to share in the grace and in the life that all of us sinners have received in Jesus. So for this we pray to the Lord. We want to pray for those who have been impacted by the fires and the flooding and all kinds of natural disasters. For all of the victims of COVID-19, I think now we're almost in the 200,000 people now. It's really, really um, just devastating, hmm? the impact of this virus. And so we pray for families that mourn the loss of their loved ones. So for all this, we pray to the Lord. And we just take a moment of quiet to offer the intentions of our hearts to the Lord. God who calls us to rise out of death into life, calls us to move from where we are to where he calls us to be. Can we say yes, like Matthew? Just open our hearts and say yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way, Jesus. And I also want to, we offer this Mass for the repose of Luis Loreano and also for Lakita Bogan Rathery. So for these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Father, be gracious to us. We, your little sinful children, help us to recognize the grace that we have been given in Christ. Help us to live this call. Help us to bask in your mercy and love together. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So please, we ask for your ongoing generosity as we continue to serve and preach the gospel. We appreciate your your help. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at our hands, praise and glory of his name, good and good of his holy church. Amen. 
As we celebrate anew the memory of St. Matthew, we bring you sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church, whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation, Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Hosea our Archbishop, all the bishops, and your entire people just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles, especially St. Matthew, whose feast we celebrate today, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. And at this Mass, we pray for the repose of Luis Laureano and Laquita Bogan Raffery. Lord, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you all. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You know, the, <clears throat> there used to be this old song. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, what a friend we have in Jesus, huh? Um, <clears throat> I think it was Bishop Barron. He noted that um, one of the words when Matthew got up, is anastasis in Greek. That's 
to rise up. That's resurrection. Jesus comes to us to call us to rise up from death to life. You know, so maybe take a moment as we as we want to do this spiritual communion. Um, think about whatever is dead in your life or in your heart or in a relationship or yeah. And hear Jesus looking see him looking at you with love and as he pointed at Matthew inviting him come come follow me let him draw you from death from what binds you and me from our sin from our slavery let him call us into life with him into companionship, fellowship, into his love. So take some time with Jesus now. I did not come to call the just, but sinners, says the Lord. We pray. Sharing in that saving joy, O Lord, with which St. Matthew welcomed the Savior as a guest in his home, we pray, grant that we may always be renewed by the food we receive from Christ, who came to call not the just, but sinners to salvation who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. We do have a special apostolic blessing, so if you're at home, you can uh, bow your heads for this blessing or respond, Amen, as well. Huh? May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the Holy Apostle Matthew, and the Church says, Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. And the church says, Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland. For by their teaching, you possess firmness of faith. And the church says, Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. And the church says, Amen. Well, our Mass is ended. We go forth to announce the good news of the Lord. <laughs>